Welcome to Swashbuckling with Code. I am Jimmy Cleveland, and today we're going to create a Gatsby site, but we're going to do it starterless. So what I mean by starterless in this situation is that it's very common, the most common way in my opinion, to create Gatsby sites using their starters, which are fantastic. They come batteries included. They have just, you know, everything working for you and you just get you going right away if you're creating a blog or whatnot. But the somewhat issue that I have with them is that for new people, it's a lot of boilerplate. Uh, it might create some confusion and there's just kind of a lot of magic going on behind the scenes, which is cool, but I think it helps to start from a very minimal uh, code example. So what I want to do in this video is show how few of, uh, you know, package installations and files that you need to get a Gatsby site going so that you can understand better um, you know, the, the Gatsby ecosystem and how to bend it to your will, so to speak. So I'm the type of person that doesn't like a whole lot of magic um, in my tool chains, so I like to distill it down and understand uh, the minimum parts first. So we're going to be doing it without GraphQL, and we're just going to be using basic JavaScript objects. So GraphQL is awesome, and it's really where Gatsby shines, uh, in my opinion, it just taking different data sources and turning it all into one in this nice queryable format. But we'll get to that in a later video. In this video, what we're going to do is just simply go through uh, the, the minimal steps required to get this thing running. So if you're the type of person that uh, enjoys knowing a little bit more about what's going on under the hood, stay tuned and let's get into this. So to start, we're going to create a directory where all great projects begin. Uh, so we'll make this directory, and I'm just going to call it, you know, Gatsby Demo. Why not? We've got no good reason for that. Go to Gatsby Demo, and now we want to create this um, by using npm or yarn. I'm going to use yarn uh, in this situation. So yarn init, and I'm going to do dash y just because I don't care about the questions. And that's to start here. Let's take a look at that. Bring that over here. And now you can see we have this package JSON in here and that's it right now, okay? So we're obviously gonna need Gatsby. So let's just yarn add Gatsby. Woo! Yeah, that one always takes a while. Okay, so now that we have Gatsby installed, could we just run this? Well, let's find out. So you can come here and make some scripts. And the reason that we're doing this, I'm gonna make a develop script, is because um, we want to use, oops, yarn develop, sorry, Gatsby develop. We wanna use Gatsby from our node modules that we just installed it. So you could, many times you'll see people use uh, Gatsby develop just straight from the terminal here. And um, if you have that globally installed, that's great. But um, the reason I don't like doing that is because it's always going to use the one that you have globally installed um, rather than the one that you just installed locally, which is probably more up to date. Um, so if I'm ever like creating a project, I typically do NPX Gatsby just so I get the latest version, just so you know that. So now we can run yarn develop from the script we just made and let's see what happens. Okay, so we get this error. And there's an error compiling the HTML JS, but the thing I want to draw your attention to is cannot find module React DOM server. Okay, so now we know that um, we do in fact need React to be installed, or we could infer that. So let's do that. Now React, it's always going to come with React DOM if we're going to be doing it in the web. Whoops, yarn add React, React DOM. I'm a big dum dum. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, look at that. Okay, so if we were to take this address right here, we can then uh, pop on over to our browser. And I actually already had that in. And here we'll see this lovely 404 page. So that's pretty cool. It was that simple just to have Gatsby actually run, you know, you don't have a, a 
a site quite yet. Well, I guess you have a site, but you don't have any pages. So notice it says there's not yet a slash, and they have this awesome little message that tells you create a React.js component in your site directory. So we're going to do that right here, source pages index. Okay. So going back to the code, you might not know this pretty nice little trick. If you do new file here or right click new file, um, kind of somewhat unintuitive, but you can create a whole uh, folder uh, ancestry plus a file. So let's do source. They want to just create it at pages and call it index.js. And then check that out. It automatically opens it and it's created the full path for you. So I'm just going to use a snippet here that I have and we'll do it uppercase. It doesn't actually matter for these, just the way that Gatsby works, but you know, typically you do components uppercase. So I'm just going to stick to that convention and we don't need anything in there. And in here, we're just going to put an H1 and say um, the home page because I'm boring. All right. Now it said it was going to, uh, this page will automatically refresh and show you the new page component. That might be true on other operating systems. I'm using WSL and maybe there is just kind of like a listening problem. Um, so if I refresh here, it still doesn't do it. So whenever I create that first one, I just have to rerun develop. And then we'll reload and we have the home page. Okay, so it's that simple. There's that few of packages. You know, obviously they have a bunch of sub dependencies and all that. But as far as like boilerplate goes, uh, it's pretty simple. So what we just did is um, we saw that Gatsby wants us to have something in the pages directory and it's going to make the pages based on this. So the file name is really what's important. Um, whatever we made this file name is what's gonna be the, the slug or the route. And uh, this component actually isn't that important, except for like stack traces. So the next step would be um, how you're going to create a page manually using some data. So what you can do to do that is you can create a file called Gatsby node, which a lot of starters will start with. And so that's not required for Gatsby. Um, but if you want to do something, you know, custom in here or do some bring in some data yourself this is what you're going to need this file for so let's show you that you can do this exports.create pages and these are methods that um, Gatsby exposes while it's building that you can use to kind of make it build the way that you want let's just call it that so we're going to pull actions off of this and this is a pretty common process I'll show it in the docs in a moment. Uh, so we want to pull create page off of this actions, which we get from create pages. Okay. And obviously you could destruct that up here, however you like. Um, I think this is just how they do it in the docs and it's a little more clear to me. So from there, what we want to do is we want to call create page and create page takes a path, which is important. So this path, we're going to call it just, I don't know, created. And then uh, next, go away. Uh, what we're gonna do is give it a component. That's the other required part. Now, in order to get this component, we're gonna need to do path.resolve, and then we're going to go find it. Now, it's very common to put it in source templates and then wherever you want. I don't believe that matters since you're just importing it directly here and you're not you know, relying on Gatsby's auto setup. But we're gonna call this just a generic.js, okay? And that means that I'm going to need path and, and that should be it. Okay, so let's go create that component so it can actually work. So in here, we can do the same thing again. I'll go to source now and I'll say I want to create a file and we'll do templates slash and we were making a generic .js. Okay, so use my little snippet again. And the, um, we're gonna call it, we'll leave it as generic. For now, it's not gonna take anything. And then here, I'm gonna say the generic template, okay? And um, if you're curious, uh, these snippets that I'm using are from, you can go look up snippet good. Um, this one right here, I have this little plugin that has just a bunch of React, um, mostly, it's updated with hooks and all that stuff. It's got some testing hooks and all that stuff. So feel free to check that out if you're curious how I'm doing these. Okay, so 
Moving on, we now can say, all right, well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebuild for this one. They actually have a little hook in the browser that detects when Gatsby node changes, and maybe I'll show that after this, but I'm just so used to just rebuilding anytime you change any of the actual like build steps. Okay, so that's there now. So we could still um, have the home page, but if we go to a 404 now, we can see that it takes us to this page that shows all of your uh, pages in general. It gives you this nice little search, and you can see there's this created one for that route we made, and there's the generic template. So that's how you create it dynamically. So that might not seem that useful since you can just create a page, right? Uh, but that is going to make it to where now we can use some data to create some pages. And what I want to show there is that you don't actually have to go through um, GraphQL or any source plugin or anything like that to create pages dynamically. Uh, that that like I said, that is really where Gatsby um, just starts to shine and be awesome. But you know, just for learning's sake, let's make this file here in the root, and I'm just going to call it data.js. Okay, and then I'm going to do module.exports, and I'm doing module exports instead of import export, just because this is all Node stuff. Um, so I will use you know imports and exports like I was in the React components, the client side type stuff. But uh, you can use um, you can use uh, import export with newer versions of Node, but you know I'm just not cool enough to get on that train just yet. So we're going to create an array here, and this is going to be an array of objects. What we're going to need is we're going to need a slug. So I'm just going to say first for this slug, we're now I'm just making this data up, but the slug will be important in a moment. The title is going to be first page. The description, why not? Is going to be, uh, I am the first page. Okay, and then we're going to make one more object. We're going to do the same thing. And this one's going to be second. The title will be second page, you guessed it. And then the description, thank you, is going to be now page one is not so lonely. Okay, so we have our data. And what we need to do is import that in Gatsby node. So we will, oops, almost got me. Uh, we're going to import data from dot slash data. And there it is. Beautiful. And now what we want to do is first we could log out that data just so that we can see it in the process. And I'll put a bunch of, um, you know, lines here and some breaks so that it's obvious. And then we'll just print out data. See what that does. And then what we're going to want to do is say take data, loop over it, and each of those I'm going to call a page, each item, each object here. And from that page, all you really want to do is do this. Oops. So you're going to loop over each of them. You're going to do the same thing you did before, but now this is dynamic. So we're going to say, OK, well, this is page.slug, and that's why we created that. And then this is we're going to import the exact same component. And the thing that we want to do now is pass a thing called context. Okay. So what context is a way to pass variables during page creation to the template that you're creating or the component you're creating. And we could have done this with the original one. There just wasn't a need for it. So I'm going to pass the title. That's page.title. And I'm going to pass the description page dot description and that's it okay so now that we're passing that along we're not going to be doing anything with this but just to show you that um, I'm going to go back here I'm going to rerun develop real quick you can see our info logged out so we got it just a little sanity check there and we get this little uh, update that I'll I'll show in just a, a second what that actually does but for now um, I'm just going to go and say, okay, my stuff works, go back to 404, and here's first and second. So the generic template, the generic template. So that's obviously not working as intended yet. So what we need to do is go over to generic now. And then what Gatsby does is for context, it passes as the props this page context prop. So we're going to pull that off, and then we're going to 
say page context, and then that's just that object that we, let's go back over there. Uh, this right here is just going to be this object. So we'll say page context title goes here. And then we'll just do, you know, a p tag and page context dot description. You're not going to auto fill for me, huh? And that's that. And now if we go to first, um, you know, that, that was a component that wasn't anything with the build process. So it'll just auto update for us. First page. I am the first page. Great. And second, not so lonely. And it's cool is like you can you you have you know hot reloading and all the cool stuff going on now. So if you were to add another you know p tag and you can put whatever you want here, you know we're gonna get a live reload. So that's pretty cool. And that that's the gist behind that. Now let's show real quick. Let's say that I you know I I made some sort of change in Gatsby node here. This is a newer thing in Gatsby that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to delete this to simulate it. If I come over here, it'll give me this little prompt that says that Gatsby wants to restart. So I do OK, and it does this cool little loader. And you can see on, on the terminal here, it's actually rebuilding. And so as soon as this is done, it's going to refresh the page to let me know. That's pretty cool of them to add that. You know, Whatever Gatsby devs um, went and added that, thank you very much, it is a nice little feature. So yeah, that uh, I think that that sums it up pretty well. We can close here with creating a script to actually build. So let's say we, you know we actually want to put our silly site up here. We could do a build or a serve or let's do a serve in this case. Uh, and so we can just do Gatsby build and and in my case I want to do Gatsby serve. Now if you were going to have um, you know you're going to put it up on. Netlify or some other host over in JSON, sorry. You'd probably want a build step here that just does Gatsby build. And uh, that's just because you just want to build the files. You're not actually hosting anything, you know, since it's static files, it's just going to serve the files directly. But for our purposes, we're going to close that down and say yarn serve. And what this is going to do is give us a running server, a production build. It's all benefited and code split and all that beautiful stuff, you know, got rid of all the developer experience that um, makes it a little less optimized than an actual site. And so now we'll go over to here and we'll change this to 900. And there you go. We have our home page. And if we were to say slash first, there you go. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and if you're ever wondering uh, like how to learn any of this stuff, uh, the Gatsby docs are actually really good. If you just go to Gatsby, you can use just search Google here, create page or create pages, um, creating and modifying pages. You go here. Um, they have some nice docs here that just walk through this whole process, but you can also just search for that API and that you know it. So the great create pages. Oh, they do have, yeah, without GraphQL. Cool. So go to that. Um, and this will just show you some basic examples of how to create pages. And I know they have an actual create pages. Uh, hmm. Gatsby node API. And here we have create pages. Okay. It was probably in my other results and I just missed it. But here, you can see they have this create pages that shows you this really basic example. And they also link to the actual create page. Now this one, they're doing a GraphQL query, but if we go over to create page, we can see the parameters that this takes. And you can see it tells you about the component and the context and path and all that. Um, and then here's a real basic example. Hopefully that was helpful to kind of just dissect, you know, um, the the minimal parts uh, that you can use to build a Gatsby site. And from there, we'd want to move on to, you know, creating Markdown or MDX or whatever cool uh, data source that you want to have and use the Gatsby source plugins to make our lives a little bit easier and turn that as some GraphQL data uh, so that we can, you know, do queries page by page. But uh, we'll do that in a later video. All right, thanks for watching.